When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. What you are seeing here is an object in free fall. From the moment it leaves my hand, barring any air resistance, this object is only under the influence of gravity and is experiencing zero G until the moment it hits the ground. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, AKA Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. You may be wondering why I've done this little demo here. Some of you understand the fact of what I said implicitly, while others may be surprised because it goes against their concept of falling and still others of you vehemently disagree because of a misunderstanding of how gravity, acceleration, and free fall work. And that is what has inspired me to go out and throw this thing in the air a bunch of times. It's an incredibly simple demonstration that anyone can do and is a great example of how the anti-science crowd is unwilling to challenge their thinking with tasks that require very little effort. Last month, I engaged in an extended comment exchange with a tragically deluded user called Bo Pata. I'll just call them Bo. During this exchange, which spans hundreds of comments, Bo showed a fascinating range of anti-science, anti-intellectual thinking, along with fanciful, speculative ideas. This discussion takes place on my Rockets in Space video page, and I've pinned it at the top, so feel free to read through it if you have <laughs> nothing else to do. He goes from saying you can't learn true science in universities to the moon's orbit being possible due to anti-gravity to saying the ISS we see in the sky is a collection of 24 SR-71s that are projecting holograms. That's the funniest thing about the science-denying conspiracy theorists. They have so much more faith in NASA than we do. Well, than I do at least. I say that NASA has the ability to throw something fast into the sky so that it orbits around the planet and regular folks on Earth can track that thing as it goes around. He says that NASA has a technology that allows them to project holograms from or around a supersonic aircraft that they are tag teaming the duty of being the ISS, just to fool people trying to track it. I say NASA can make things go boom and fly fast. He says NASA can control light. Who worships NASA? Anyway, the big issue that he felt was evidence against objects like the ISS being real was the fact that people shown to be on the ISS were experiencing weightlessness, zero G. Now, I know that the ISS is still under the influence of gravity. We're talking about the experience of weightlessness, so please don't write to correct me. Bo's contention is that in order to experience zero G, the occupants of the ISS must be getting closer to the center of the Earth. Because in his mind, if you are in free fall, meaning your motion is only under the influence of gravity, and, and since gravity only accelerates masses toward the center of the Earth, those claiming to be on the ISS must be falling closer to the center of the Earth and therefore cannot be in orbit, because orbit claims to not come down. I said that you can be in zero G and not be getting closer to the earth. In fact, you can experience zero G while moving away from the earth. And he contends that that's not possible because an object going up is not only under the influence of gravity because gravity makes things go down. I mentioned that zero G planes experience zero G before reaching the peak of motion. And he just said that wasn't true. So I came up with this easy demo, which I will get to. Through our discussion, I found that Bo had a fundamental misunderstanding of acceleration in physics, one that many people may have. He was stuck on the common usage of acceleration as meaning getting faster, and getting slower was deceleration. He saw deceleration that happens to an object going upwards as fundamentally different than the acceleration due to gravity as an object is going down not understanding that they are the same thing. That in physics, there is no deceleration, there is only acceleration. So for those who don't understand what I just said, a quick primer. Acceleration is a change in velocity. So the properties of acceleration are dependent on the properties of velocity. Velocity is a rate of motion or speed in a particular direction. 
For example, 22 miles per hour is a speed, but 22 miles per hour due east is a velocity. That direction is known as a vector. And since velocity has a vector, a direction, acceleration has a vector. Acceleration is defined as a change in velocity, and that change can occur due to a change in speed, say 22 miles per hour going to 30 miles per hour, or a change in direction, due east becoming north-northeast. In common usage, acceleration means getting faster, but in physics, acceleration is getting faster, slower, and or changing direction. Getting slower is known as negative acceleration. That is, acceleration with a vector pointing in the opposite direction of the object's motion. In the vast majority of earthbound motion discussions, acceleration due to gravity is labeled as a negative acceleration. Why? Because when most people lay down an XYZ axis, up is labeled as positive and down as negative. And since acceleration due to gravity has a downward vector, it is labeled as negative. So when you throw an object upward in the positive direction, it begins to slow down, undergoing negative acceleration due to gravity, at the rate of 9.8 meters per second per second. When it reaches its apex of motion and starts to come back down, traveling in the negative direction, it continues its negative acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second per second, and gets faster. But for that entire time, its motion has been solely under the influence of gravity, and thus it is in free fall and experiencing zero g. This brings us to that demonstration. I asked Bo directly, if I was able to show zero g while going away from the Earth, would he consider the possibility of being wrong? It took a number of exchanges, but he finally feigned open-mindedness. So how can I show that this object is experiencing zero g? Well, I guess it would be helpful if this object had an accelerometer in it, which it does, because it's my phone. It's a very simple demonstration that anyone with a smartphone can do if they are willing to challenge their thinking. You just have to get an app that visualizes the accelerometer on your phone every, say, millisecond or so, and you record your screen. Here you can see I've synchronized my second camera recording with my screen recording, and when I set the phone down, the phone is experiencing 1G on its Z axis. You'll also notice that I've strapped a two and a half pound weight to it. That's because as a light flat object, air resistance was having a big effect on its motion. Here you can see as I tilt my phone in different directions, the axis of the phone that is pointing downward experiences the most g-force. But when it is still, those force vectors all add up to 1g. Then I go over to the sand pit to drop it. Now, that happened pretty fast, so I'll slow the next one down so you can see what happened. When I drop the phone here, it registers 0g, as expected until impact. And again. Of course, this is what everyone agrees on. You let it go, it falls. Zero G free fall. Now let's throw it up in the air. I'm going to catch it with a bag because I don't want to push any of the side buttons. Here's a little toss. And another. Let's watch this in slow motion. Here it's experiencing more acceleration due to my hand pushing it. And now that it's released, zero G going up, zero G coming down, zero G until impact with my hands. Again, released, zero G up, stop, and down, boom. Now these are more horizontal tosses like the path taken by a zero G plane. Zero G going up, and down. Zero G going up and down. And here's a big toss. Zero bam. And so there you have it. Objects can experience zero G while traveling upward away from the center of the Earth. As long as they are only under the influence of gravity, they are in free fall and thus experience weightlessness, or zero-g. You can be in orbit, constantly falling around the Earth, never getting closer to it, only influenced by gravity. Now, does this prove the ISS is real? Of course not. But it does prove that claims like Bose against the ISS are based on a lack of understanding of basic principles in physics, and it shows that 
this ignorance is voluntary because there has been nothing stopping them from doing this type of simple test themselves. It's just that their brain is incapable of conceiving a challenge to their thinking. Now, they are quick to challenge science proponents to go out and do expensive, time-consuming, and possibly impossible things. Hey, why don't you make your own rocket and see if it works in space? You could just travel to that other country and confirm it for yourself. Just go buy that $1,000 camera and prove it. But the idea of taking their phone, walking outside, and tossing it in the air a few times, that's an intellectual mountain they could never conceive of climbing. They will say, I am a physicist and I love to be proven wrong, but they will never try to prove themselves wrong. For them, that is a bridge too far. That's my job, that's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory. 